All right, we are out here in Saratoga Springs on a double header for a silver Axiom and a white Bravada. Both vehicles are parked side by side right in front of the uh, apartment building. We ran a plate on the Axiom and no plate came back and it does have a temp tag in the window. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our arm ready. We're gonna hook to the uh, Bravada and disable the Axiom. Get my wheel lock out. That's what we're going to put on the uh, vehicle we're going to disable. drive off with this vehicle. Word we've got is that the uh, Zuzu Axiom is not running, and the way the snow is bunched up against the wheels, it looks like it's been sitting there for a minute. So the steering wheel lock was probably just an extra precaution. curb we need to clear here. Well, all we do is we'll go secure this bravada over here in the uh, next neighborhood where they have no idea where it's been stored and then we'll come right back and get the Axiom and go from there. Alright, we got that Bravada dropped over in a safe location. 
got a steering wheel lock put on it. So even if they did locate it, they couldn't drive it or do anything with it. Should be safe there until we uh, get this Axiom transported over to the uh, impound yard. And then we'll come back up and get the bravada. After we've got this one successfully hooked, we're going to make contact and see if we can get keys for both of them. Lot of your uh, Zuzus are two wheel drive, four wheel drive switchable. I don't see any kind of controls on the dashboard for this one. I don't see an all wheel drive emblem on the back. That's not necessarily an indication that it's not all wheel drive. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump online real quick and pull up towspec.com. And see what options they show for this year make and model so, uh, 2002 Zuzu Axiom like there's a four-wheel drive and a rear-wheel drive version from 02 to 05. Rear-wheel drive means this would just pull right out. You put it in gear. And it is rolling. Looks like our wheel is turning on us. the seat belt so it doesn't turn on us. Now we'll pitch it so we can clear this white car in front of us. Right up to the edge of that car. get pulled out straight make sure we're not blocking any other vehicles which it looks like this one here's gonna be our best bet for that when he comes out and sees both vehicles are gone one on the back and the other one completely gone shouldn't have any problem getting keys from them for both so there's another successful double header one recovery agent one truck two vehicles at the same location, it can be done if you know how to do it. I've done enough of these successfully. You just learn how to be quick, quiet, resourceful. You can do a lot as one guy.
not answering? Okay, just tell him that when he gets home, just tell him that we picked both the vehicles up and there has them, mm -hmm. and just to call and talk to him. Okay, okay. thank you. All right, so the husband's not here right now. Not sure if he's driving a third vehicle or what, but we got pretty lucky finding both of them parked right here in front of the uh, complex, side by side like that. But we'll get this Axiom transported and then come back and get ourselves the uh, bravada over in our hiding spot. It's a good double header. All right, so before leaving the uh, area, while I was still slow rolling it, I got thinking about it, you know, because, you know, I do get sometimes consumed up in what I'm doing when I'm videoing and, or if I've got a passenger with me and I'm talking to them and about things. Sometimes I found that I will bypass standard operating procedures and I had yet gotten up underneath the Axiom and double checked because I, you know, looked online and it said that there's a four wheel drive and a rear wheel drive model and mine was rolling free and I couldn't see any controls in the cab of the vehicle for, there was no shifter on the floor, no four wheel drive shifter and no indication of any four wheel drive buttons on the dashboard. And so between the online verification and the cockpit verification, I was feeling pretty good that it was the rear wheel drive model, but I thought, but I hadn't verified by actually looking up under the vehicle to see if there's a drive line going into a bell housing connecting into the front tires. You know, the for sure way to tell it is something's all wheel drive or four wheel drive anyways. So I pulled over, I checked, it was four wheel drive. Glad I checked, I could have really messed up that vehicle up if I had to, uh, got thinking about that. That just comes from years and years and years of doing the same thing over and over and over and a little bit of intuition whatnot. But So I had to throw the dollies on the side of the road, which took a few minutes and a little extra work. I also looked up the uh, Oldsmobile Bravada because I was pretty sure it was all-wheel drive. And sure enough, from 1996 to 2004, all the Bravadas are all-wheel drive all the time. So when we get back to the Bravada, I get to throw the dolly for the second time. A double header with two all-wheel drives. I haven't had one of those in probably three years. Like the last time I can remember a double header where I got both vehicles and they were both, you know, both were on target and I got them both. And uh, in that situation, one of them was a Jeep Grand Cherokee and it didn't roll at all. So I actually had to throw the dollies right there before anybody came out and get it out of there first. And then uh, the second vehicle was a uh, some kind of little SUV. Oh, no, it was a BMW, an all-wheel drive BMW, uh, which you don't see a lot of. Most BMWs are rear-wheel drive. It was a real nice high-end Beamer. Anyhow, but that's the last time I can remember having a doubleheader, both vehicles there, and had to throw the dollies twice uh, real fast. And this one was a little bit easier because I was able to slow roll both vehicles out, both of them rolled a short distance, which they will do on these models. And uh, there's a difference between all-wheel drives and four-wheel drives. All-wheel drives, most of them, they'll lock up, they won't even move at all if they're an all-wheel drive, but the front tires don't roll at all, so you don't have that freedom of being able to, like how I was able to pitch that one out and move around and <clears throat> doing all that, you know, on an all-wheel drive vehicle until you throw the dollies is impossible. So it was, you know, the similarities and differences between the two, but yeah, it's been a while since I remember Last time I had a double header with two all wheel drives. Fun, fun. It's repoing. We'll be back up on this Bravada in about 10 minutes and we'll get her thrown up on all four and get her transported. On to the next one. So, to give you guys a perspective of how I chose where to stash my vehicle until I get back to on this double header, those are the apartment complexes over there. It's a pretty large complex. I came up and around to this next major intersection. There's a shopping center here, which is a public parking lot. Good place to leave a vehicle without having to worry about it getting towed or being at risk of anything like that while you're away from it. Worst thing that could happen would be that the uh, owner can stumble across it. And that's why we always make sure that we put some kind of a disabling device on the vehicle so that it uh, stays right where it's supposed to be. There's our bravado sitting right there. A few more vehicles have shown up since we've left because it's now 4.30 in the afternoon. You got people starting to get off work and stuff and it gets a little more crowded at the shopping center. So we're getting 
get back here just in time to get this hooked up and load it up and get it out of here. Go do some more work. You want to see something cool? Strap. Pretty cool, huh? Think it'll work again? Strap. Pretty cool, huh? Let's see that again. Dollies! Wow, <laughs> that was cool. Don't we wish it was always that easy? All right, so while I was putting the dollies on for real, the uh, debtor called and we're just right here over by his place and he was asking if he could get some stuff out of the vehicle. And I told him that we would, I made it sound like I happened to still be in the area, you know, doing some stuff that I still had the bravada on hook. And I said, why don't you grab the keys for both vehicles and uh, meet me over in the parking lot of the shopping center behind your place there. And so to him, it seems like we're going out of our way to meet him instead of setting up a time later to have him come get his stuff. And so he's, he appreciates it and he's grabbing the keys. It should be a friendly exchange. So we'll sit here and he should be here in just a second. Alright, so it looks like he's pulling up in a work truck, which explains why both vehicles were at the house. He's driving a work truck right now. We'll uh, use this opportunity to uh, let him get some stuff out of the vehicle, get keys from him, and then also find out if we can what's wrong with the uh, Axiom, just to help the finance company save them some time and money. Oh, uh, Jacob? Yeah. Alright, you know, what's uh, wrong with the uh, Axiom? Oh, so... When they sold it to us, they didn't have oil in it. They didn't tell us they cleared the lights. Are you kidding me? Not even kidding me. We lost it on the fourth day of having it. It ran for four whole days of driving without oil in it? I guess so. That's so, pretty incredible. I would, it's, you go to unlock it and kill it with you. Yeah, that was pretty ticked off. Oh, dude. So are they going to, because it was their mistake, they're going to cover it? Or how's that, how does that fall? I hope we're just playing screwed. Wow, I find that hard to believe. Yeah, yeah maybe we go down. Who's, what was it called? Yeah, right there in the Utah. Yeah, yeah. It's gone too. No oil. No so, oil. That, so, I mean, did they verify, like, that it didn't leak out on you once you took it, that it was like, there could have been no oil on it when you got it? No. That's what they were doing. So they said, they said, well, it was sold as is. And they, uh, they offered us this uh, warranty which we bought, which is good for 100,000 miles and and 90 days, or 1,000 miles in 90 days we could get stuff. Out on the fourth day, we put about 150 miles on it. We were mad, but wow. Yeah, we got nice and sad. Oh, okay. You guys did? Yeah. Oh, wow. It wow. started the life. I know. We have picked up a few vehicles that actually still have the dust buried on the windows and stuff. Pretty fresh. Yeah. So, you're like, oh, so it's not just us. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's, if you're getting married, it's when money's tight. Yeah, it really is. You overspend sometimes, and sometimes it just isn't there. My credit was so bad when I got let go from my job. So I, uh, I just, I got screwed, so I had a second chance. Which, uh, I don't think it's in the mess. Alright, you're fine. Take your time. Don't feel like you're rusting again. Oh, that's all right. Do you guys get these back? No. You're not? No. no. Um, this. I don't know if anybody wants to remember this. Just sit on the passenger seat. That, and whoever ends up with it will see it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, brother. Thank you. Take it easy. Whew. All right. So I was doing my notes on this account when he pulled up, but almost to the finish point. So finish those up before I get on the road while the thoughts are fresh. Get my notes in. 
and we'll uh, see what else we get on hook tonight.